Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Liz and this is Gabby. Okay, and today is going to be the thousand dollars at Sephora. I'm gonna use Ulta as well, but Sephora slash Ulta. What would I buy if I had a thousand dollars? Do you want to start with your tags, your Instagram? Okay, so she's a model. So I'm a model from New York City. My Instagram is G A B B I underscore nine nine nine. Um, I work with DCX. It's an agency in Binghamton. So today I think we're going to be going over our wish list slash slash shopping list at Ulta slash Sephora. So I hope you guys enjoy. Sorry, there was a mosquito that got in here. That's what it was. Okay, anyways. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna go off my like my loves on Sephora and the uh, my wish list from Ulta. So I guess I'll go first and then you like bounce off to which one you like. Yep. You already have some right. Okay. Yeah. So my first thing would be the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Eyeshadow Palette and it's like $67. I'll pop up a picture of after everything we say if I feel like it during editing. I don't necessarily love the retrograde palette. I yeah. I love Huda Beauty, but I like more bold colors, so I would be more inclined to go for their neon orange or neon pink. Oh, like the little mini palette, the nine pan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that would be one of the first things I pick up from Sephora. Okay. Would you buy like which colors? Because she has like three different ones. Yes. She has the orange. She has the pink, and then she has the green. I would buy the orange and the pink. Okay. Because I have her little nine palette eyeshadow palettes, and I think it's like the Obsessions, the Gemstones. Yeah. And... I have Ruby Obsessions, and I loved yeah. it. I used the shit out of two shades, yeah. three shades maybe, but. I don't know. I have a few of the colored ones too. I don't remember. I think it was sapphire, topaz, the green one. It was on my, I'll pop it up, my em eyeshadow palette. Emerald. So my next thing would be obviously the Natasha Denona's. I think there's a sunset, the yes. lilac one. I'm getting all three of them and I think there's like an orange one. There was a tropical eyeshadow, but they all retail for like $129. There was a tropical one that was on, um, there was a tropical one that was on sale, which I would probably be purchased if it's on sale, but like, if I have just a thousand dollars to spend, I'll just add it to the list. I would definitely get the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. Yeah. I love that palette. Oh my god. I think, <laughs> I think also, I would never purchase it like with my money, like, but the Pat McGrath. Cause they're Pat McGrath. So, they're so expensive. I would they get the are. Mothership One, Two, Divine, all her palettes if I just have a thousand dollars to spend. Yeah, I would get. I think Mothership Three or Four, whichever one is the rosy one. Mm -hmm. Those are really nice. I would also get a couple of the Path McGrath Path McGrath singles, mm -hmm. yeah. as well as a few of the lipsticks. I don't know. I feel like her little quads are like retail like sixty five dollars. Even if I had a thousand dollars to spend, I'm not dropping it on little four quads. I I believe Pat McGrath was started by a man. I I'm think it's a female. I think it's a really? black owned female brand. Yeah. You want to look that up? I will. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, started by a black female and it's like black owned. I think that just the Natasha Denona's and the Pat McGrath palettes will take up to like $600. And in addition, while she Googles that, I think I would buy every, every single palette from the Juvia's Place collections. I oh, think it is. It's a she. I thought it was a he. Yeah, no, it's a she. And yeah. So it was, yeah. So it was Beauty Bakery. Yeah. Yeah. So, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? You would buy <laughs> every single pat they every single palette from Juvia's Place. Um, I I think I own like Warriors One or something like that. I only own a couple Juvia's Place, but I would purchase the rest of the Juvia's Place just to complete my collection, including like the Brush Tribe palettes. I personally like the Juvia's Place Warriors palette. I'm not mm -hmm. really familiar with all of the rest of them, but that was you one I showed you. To me, sure. Hold on, because they're all on my like Ulta wish list. So there's the Sahara eyeshadow palette, the Zulu palette, the Masquerade mini eyeshadow palette, the Sahara volume 2 blush palette, the Afrique eyeshadow palette, the Douce eyeshadow palette, and then it gets to the rest of myself. But like, Got it. Yeah. Yeah. There's like 20 or like maybe 10. <laughs> I don't know. I'll get them all. It's like Pokemon, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I definitely love uh, Juvia's metallic form. Formula, mm -hmm. the one that she uses in the Warrior for the gold. Yeah, I love that, that one. specific shape. Like, just because the pan is so big, mm -hmm. it's quite nice. <laughs> okay. So the first thing that I would get is I have three shades from Beauty Bakery that I like, mm -hmm. and the first is Sangria Splash. I would get at least two or three in that, mm -hmm. so it would be about forty to sixty dollars. Yeah. I would get, I believe it's called Mon Cherie. Mm -hmm. I would get two or three packages of that as well. It's a really nice red shade. They're both like 
Red shades, Sangria Splash is a little deeper and more berry toned, but Mon Cherry is more like red toned. Um, and the last shade that I would get from Beauty Bakery was just the straight up black. Oh. Like these are the single, single eyeshadows? No, or like these palettes? are lipsticks. Oh, lipsticks. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Alright, I'll pop up. And I think every of the Juvia's Page eyeshadow palettes, they all average about $20 on average. I love collecting eyeshadow palettes, and I think you yeah. love collecting like lipstick shades. So I was like confused, but I guess. No, those are lipsticks. I believe Beauty Bakery has a few eyeshadow palettes, but they're more neutral toned. Yeah, I didn't gravitate towards their, I their lip don't. collection though. What is it, like oh, whipped something? Lip whips. Lip whips. Yeah, I gravitated toward them like sometime in 2016, I think, was mm -hmm. when they had all those Instagram ads with the girls who had like all of the swatches on their hand mm -hmm. and they'd run it underwater and it wouldn't like be oh, water. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why. And it's still, to, the, to this day, to the best mm -hmm. lip formula that I've used. Mm -hmm. It's a little drying, but it has outlasted for me Dose of Colors, um, LA Girl, Jeffree Star, Kat Von D. Mm -hmm. has a lot of like staying power. Okay. The next thing on my Ulta thing is Ofra Cosmetics highlighters. They retail $40 each. That's just bugging for one highlighter. Right. So I think the one on my thing is Pillow Talk because everybody talks about how much they have it, but you actually own it. I do have Pillow Talk. It's a really nice shade. I tend not to use it as much. Mm -hmm. I prefer holographic highlighters, so I kind of like the pink slash white, like it shifts in the light kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I also like blue shifts and like blue holographic shifts. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily hollow, like the hollow sparkly, but like more like color shifting. Mm -hmm. I would also get the Lime Crime lipsticks. <laughs> Okay. I've been dying to try Lime Crime's formula, but mm -hmm. I haven't for so long just because of all of the scandals that they've had up to this point. Yeah, should we talk about a couple of them? Yeah, so the one scandal that had held me back from Lime Crime for the longest time was the lead scandal. And it was that them, I believe NARS and a couple of drugstore slash cosmetic, like drugstore cosmetic brands, were putting lead in their darker shades. For Lime Crime, I believe it was for their darker lipstick shades. Mm -hmm. And for NARS, it was for their darker foundation shades. I could be wrong, but I believe that those brands were accused for putting lead in their shades, especially for their shades that were more pigmented or a little bit darker. You know. That rumor for Lime Crime came out in about 2016. It's 2020. I haven't heard any subsequent rumors that they're still doing that, so that's why I would now try Lime Crime versus four years ago. Okay, for anyone who doesn't know, lead is very poisonous to the individual. There was a uh, lead used in paint a long time ago. Ooh, do you see that nasty ass mosquito right there? I don't know where <laughs> she came from, but that's the third one in here. Mm. Sorry. But anyways, yeah, so it was used in like the 1800s, right? It was used as paint and it would cause like a lot of damages to the children that would be in those homes. So like lead in your foundation or in your lip products going directly into your skin and in your body is very toxic, especially in certain levels. So actually, here is a little bit of evidence. The FDA investigated Lime Crime in 2015 for including toxic ingredients in their Velveteen Liquid Lip Ingredient List. They said that they were using ferro ferrocyanide and ultramarine. Ferrocyanide is iron cyanide, I believe. Yeah. And another thing with Lime Crime, the owner of Lime Crime, or somebody who's heavily associated with Lime Crime, I don't her know her name. It's very special. I think I'll pop it up if I can remember it or just Google it. She was seen wearing, uh, she dressed up as Hitler for some reason. I don't even think it was Halloween. I think she was just doing a photo shoot and she decided to dress up as Hitler. So that was, <laughs> yes. you know. So also going more on that, I'm not entirely sure that it was lead. However, in August 12, 2015, the FDA issued a label saying that Lime Crime Cosmetics Velveteen Liquid Lipsticks were unsafe for internal use. Lipstick and other cosmetic products are considered external use. However, if you count how many times that you've accidentally eaten your lipstick or accidentally bitten on something while you're having lipstick on, no. It becomes ingested and internalized really quickly. So, yeah, I bite they... my lips atrociously, especially when it's like dry. I'm sorry, there's 
yeah. too many mosquitoes in here for my liking. So, but like especially like after it starts drying after the end of the day, I just start like biting my lip and you know I'm. So more yeah. specifically, the FDA did not approve of these ingredients in the li in the liquid lipsticks because lips are designated as mucous membranes mm -hmm. of the mouth because they do get in contact and produce mucus. So therefore, they were not safe. About the NARS, Lime Crime, NARS. Maybelline, L'Oreal, and I believe CoverGirl being called out by the FDA in 2012 for showing that 400 shades of popular lipstick contained trace amounts of lead Jesus. during um, a regulated consumer check by the FDA. So this means that the FDA was just testing samples of these lipsticks and they came back with trace amounts of lead. However, the conspiracy behind this is that it was only the darker shades of lipstick meant for women of color, mm -hmm. or like dark reds, dark plums, that came back with these trace amounts of lead. Mm -hmm. I think this is an issue that a lot of cosmetics retailers don't discuss, don't talk about. It's never been mentioned as far as I know since about 2014, maybe 2016 era. And I think it's an issue that... Conspiracy. That they should come out and address and acknowledge that they had trace amounts of lead in their cosmetics that they were found to have them, how they have rectified the situation. I'm not entirely sure if they have released subsequent statements saying that they did not have lead in their cosmetics or that it was an off batch. Mm -hmm or that they wanted to rectify this situation, but I still think that that is an issue that people are not discussing. Yeah, that's ridiculous. 400... It's ridiculous. <sighs> okay. Moving on. Yes, I'm pretty sure we exceeded the thousand dollar what would I buy in my cart. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, comment, subscribe because YouTube makes me say this, and do you want to mention any products that you're wearing on your face? Because I just list mine. Uh, Beauty Bakery, the eyeshadow is... Oh shit, Makeup Revolution, or no. Really? No, it's not. It's Makeup Revolution's sister brand in Europe. It's I Heart Revolution. It's uh -huh. sold in Poland. They're coming out with another brand. Are they? <laughs> Something. It was sold yeah. in Poland. It's the same formula as Makeup Revolution. And then the glitter and the metallic eyeshadow is ColourPop. Okay. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. If you watch this video all the way through, comment down a little money emoji. And yeah, bye! Bye!